World War II U.S. Marines Air Ace Gregory Pappy Boyington was desperate to get one more confirmed kill. Hit the target and it would bring his total number of enemy planes down to 26, equaling the record total by any American fighter pilot. Boyington's chance came in January 1944 over the Pacific, but things didn't turn out well for him. Gregory Boyington was born in Coeur Idaho in 1912. His biological parents divorced when he was still very young and Boyington's mother married her second husband Ellsworth J. Hallenbeck when her son was just three. Hence the infant was brought up as Gregory Hallenbeck. In fact, Boyington was not to learn that Hallenbeck was not his natural father until later in life, a fact that he was able to turn to his advantage as we shall see. Boyington spent much of his boyhood in St. Marie's, Idaho. It was here, aged just six, that he received an inkling of what the future might hold for him. Renowned pilot Clyde Pangborn, who would later become one of the first two men to fly non-stop across the Pacific, was in town one day and Boyington managed to find the five dollars needed to go up for a flight with him. It seems the youngster caught the flying bug at a very tender age. At the age of 12, Boyington moved to Tacoma, Washington and graduated from the Lincoln High School there in 1930. He then went on to Seattle's University of Washington where he was a keen wrestler and a swimmer of some prowess. Speaking to the Milwaukee Journal in 1944, Boyington's mother recalled, He was always a fighter, always coming home with a bloody nose. Greg wasn't a brilliant student but was thorough and whatever he learnt he kept. Switching topics, she added, they didn't have model planes for little boys then. Gregory made his own. Boyington left university in 1934 with an aeronautical engineering degree and went to work at Boeing's Seattle plant. In 1935, Boyington decided to embark on flight training under the U.S. Navy's Aviation Cadet Training Program. But there was a problem. He discovered that to qualify for this scheme, he had to be unmarried. Trouble is, he'd tied the knot with 17-year-old Helen Clark, with whom he would go on to have three children, in 1934. His application was next. To support his application, however, the wannabe pilot had applied for a copy of his birth certificate. When it arrived, he found out for the first time that the man he called Dad was not his biological father. His actual father was Gregory Boyington, whom his mother had divorced. Now adopting the name Boyington, he was able to successfully reapply for pilot training as an ostensible single man. Whether he ever received any sanctions for this subterfuge is not recorded. After a spell in the Marines, Boyington became a second lieutenant with the regular U.S. Marines in 1937 and then took officer training, which he completed in 1939. Following a promotion to first lieutenant, he became an instructor at the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, Florida in 1940. Clearly keen to see some action, Boyington actually quit the Marines in 1941 so that he could join an outfit called the Flying Tigers. This was a flighter plane unit run by a private company which was contracted to fight with China in its war with Japan. At this point, the U.S. had not yet joined World War II. Promoted to the position of flight leader, Boyington now claimed his first kills, shooting down two Japanese planes and destroying another on the ground. With the U.S. now at war with Japan, after the December 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, Boyington left the Tigers in April 1942. Traveling back to the States, he rejoined the Marines. Unsurprisingly, given his recent combat experience, the Marines promoted Boyington to Major. Early in 1943, he was sent to Guadalcanal in the South Pacific, taking the position of Marine Fighter Squadron 122's executive officer. In September 1943, he was made commander of Marine Fighter Squadron 214, which was to become famous under its informal title of the Black Sheep Squadron. It was now that Boyington received his nickname of Pappy, similar because he was 31, an advanced age for a fighter pilot, when most of his buddies were in their early 20s. It was also now that Boyington, flying Vought F4U Corsairs, entered into an extraordinary and prolific period of airborne combat success. Boyington and his men now found themselves taking part in the intense fighting that was taking place in the Pacific, around islands including New Georgia, New Britain and Bougainville. 
On the Black Sheep Squadron's first combat tours towards the end of 1943, Boyington brought down 14 Japanese fighters in just 32 days. Of the many missions that Boyington and his men now flew, one example gives the flavor. It came on October 17, 1943. Leading a force of 24 fighters, Boyington flew over the Japanese airbase at Kahili on the island of Bougainville. His squadron's appearance provoked a strong force of Japanese fighters to take to the air. The result was 20 Japanese planes destroyed, with all of Boyington's men returning to the base unharmed. At a personal level, as the end of 1943 approached, Boyington's overall tally of kills had climbed to 25. This was a significant number because of what U.S. fighter pilot Eddie Rickenbacker had achieved during World War I. Rickenbacker had downed 26 enemy planes and that remained the all-time record. Still, with just his 25 kills, Boyington set off on a mission on January 3, 1944. That he wanted to equal and even better the record is not in doubt, something the Milwaukee Journal made clear. The newspaper reported his words in 1944, just a week before that January mission. Sure, I want that record of 26 planes down. Who the hell wouldn't? I'd like to make it 35 he told his buddies in the mess hall. The fateful January mission involved a force of 48 U.S. fighters heading into Rabaul, an important Japanese base on the island of New Britain. Flying as tactical commander that day, Boyington's chance to make his 26 kill came up and he took it. But in the confusion of battle, his comrades lost sight of him. He'd equaled the record, but he didn't return to base. That's because Boyington had been shot down and had ditched in the sea. By an extraordinary stroke of luck, he was rescued by a Japanese submarine that happened to come across him. Since he was now a prisoner of war, it might not have seemed like such a great slice of luck to Boyington at the time. But after 20 months in captivity, Boyington was again a free man. The atomic bombs dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima had forced Japan's hand and the country surrendered. For his outstanding bravery during the war, Boyington received the Navy Cross and he was also awarded the Medal of Honor, America's highest military decoration, by President Harry S. Truman. Despite these decorations, Boyington did not adapt well to life outside the Marines, with alcohol blighting his life. The ex-pilot had a hard time settling down for any job, his troubled personal life saw him go through four marriages, and his health was compromised both by his drinking and his heavy smoking. His first bout of cancer came in the 1960s, although it was 1988 before he died, age 75. However turbulent Boyington's later years were, his wartime service to his country stands as a heroic memorial to the man. Fittingly, he was afforded full military honors at his burial at the Arlington National Cemetery.